In general relativity, a geodesic generalizes the notion of a straight line to curved spacetime. Importantly, the world line of a particle free from all external, non gravitational force, is a particular type of geodesic. In other words, a freely moving or falling particle always moves along a geodesic. In general relativity, gravity can be regarded as not a force but a consequence of a curved spacetime geometry where the source of curvature is the stress energy tensor, representing matter, for instance. Thus, for example, the path of a planet orbiting a star is the projection of a geodesic of the curved 4D spacetime geometry around the star onto 3D space. Mathematical expression The full geodesic equation is this d 2 x mu d S two plus gamma mu alpha beta d x alpha d s d x beta d s equals zero Display style d caret two x caret mu over d s caret two plus gamma caret mu underscore alpha beta d x caret alpha over d s d x caret beta over d s equals zero, where s is a scalar parameter of motion, e.g. the proper time, and gamma mu alpha beta display style gamma caret mu underscore alpha beta are Christoffel symbols sometimes called the affine connection coefficients or Levi-Civita connection coefficients which is symmetric in the two lower indices. Greek indices may take the values, 0, 1, 2, 3 and the summation convention is used for repeated indices alpha alpha and beta displaystyle beta the quantity on the left-hand side of this equation is the acceleration of a particle, and so this equation is analogous to Newton's laws of motion which likewise provide formulae for the acceleration of a particle. This equation of motion employs the Einstein notation, meaning that repeated indices are summed i.e. from 0 to 3. The Christoffel symbols are functions of the four spacetime coordinates, and so are independent of the velocity or acceleration or other characteristics of a test particle whose motion is described by the geodesic equation. <laughs> <laughs> Equivalent mathematical expression using coordinate time as parameter So far the geodesic equation of motion has been written in terms of a scalar parameter s. It can alternatively be written in terms of the time coordinate t x 0 display style t equiv x caret 0. Here we have used the triple bar to signify a definition. The geodesic equation of motion then becomes d 2 x mu D T two equals minus gamma mu alpha beta D X alpha D T D X beta D T plus gamma zero alpha beta d x alpha d t d x beta d t d x mu d t Display style d caret two x caret mu over d t caret two equals gamma caret mu underscore alpha beta d x caret alpha over d t d x caret beta over d t plus gamma caret zero underscore alpha beta d x caret alpha over d t d x caret beta over d t d x caret mu over d t. 
This formulation of the geodesic equation of motion can be useful for computer calculations and to compare general relativity with Newtonian gravity. It is straightforward to derive this form of the geodesic equation of motion from the form which uses proper time as a parameter, using the chain rule. Notice that both sides of this last equation vanish when the mu index is set to zero. If the particle's velocity is small enough, then the geodesic equation reduces to this d 2 x n d t 2 equals minus gamma n o o display style d caret 2 x caret n over dt caret 2 equals gamma caret n underscore o o here the latin index n takes the values 1 2 3 this equation simply means that all test particles at a particular place and time will have the same acceleration which is a well known feature of newtonian gravity for example, everything floating around in the International Space Station will undergo roughly the same acceleration due to gravity. Topic: <laughs> Derivation directly from the equivalence principle. Physicist Steven Weinberg has presented a derivation of the geodesic equation of motion directly from the equivalence principle. The first step in such a derivation is to suppose that no particles are accelerating in the neighborhood of a point event with respect to a freely falling coordinate system x mu display style x caret mu setting t x 0 display style t equiv x caret 0 we have the following equation that is locally applicable in free fall d 2 x mu d t 2 equals 0 display style d caret 2 x caret mu over dt caret 2 equals 0 the next step is to employ the multi dimensional chain rule we have d x mu d t equals D x nu d t x mu x nu display style d x caret mu over d t equals d x caret nu over d t partial x caret mu over partial x caret nu. Differentiating once more with respect to the time, we have d two x mu d t 2 equals d 2 x nu d t 2 x mu x nu plus d x nu d t D x alpha D T two x mu x nu x alpha Display style D carrot two x carrot mu over D T carrot two equals D carrot two x carrot nu over D T carrot two partial x carrot mu over partial x carrot nu plus D x carrot nu over D T D x carrot alpha over D T partial carrot two x carrot mu over partial x carrot nu partial x carrot alpha Therefore D two x New D T two X mu X new equals minus D X new D T D X alpha D T two X mu x nu x alpha 
Display style d caret two x caret nu over d t caret two partial x caret mu over partial x caret nu equals d x caret nu over d t d x caret alpha over d t partial caret two x caret mu over partial x caret nu partial x caret alpha. Multiply both sides of this last equation by the following quantity x lambda x mu display style partial x caret lambda over partial x caret mu consequently we have this d 2 x lambda d t 2 equals minus d x nu d t d x alpha D T two X mu X nu X alpha X lambda X mu Display style D carrot two x carrot lambda over D T carrot two equals D x carrot new over D T D x carrot alpha over D T left partial carrot two x carrot mu over partial x carrot new partial x carrot alpha partial x carrot lambda over partial x carrot mu right Using from Christoffel symbols hashtag change of variable and the fact that the Christoffel symbols vanish in an inertial frame of reference Gamma Lambda new alpha equals two x mu x new x alpha x lambda x mu Display style gamma carrot lambda underscore new alpha equals left partial carrot two x carrot mu over partial x carrot new partial x carrot alpha partial x carrot lambda over partial x carrot mu right. It becomes d two x lambda d t two equals minus gamma new alpha lambda d x new d t d x alpha d t Display style d caret two x caret lambda over d t caret two equals gamma underscore new alpha caret lambda d x caret new over d t d x caret alpha over d t. Applying the one-dimensional chain rule gives d two x lambda d t two d t d T two plus D X Lambda D T D two T D T two equals minus Gamma new alpha Lambda D X New D T D X Alpha D T D T D T two Display style D carrot two x carrot lambda over D T carrot two left FRAC D T D T right carrot two plus D x carrot lambda over D T FRAC D carrot two T D T carrot two equals Gamma underscore new alpha carrot lambda D x carrot new over D T D x carrot alpha over D T left FRAC D T D T right carrot two D Two x lambda d t two plus d x lambda d t d 
2 t d t 2 d t d t 2 equals minus gamma nu alpha lambda d x nu d t d x alpha d t Display style d caret two x caret lambda over d t caret two plus d x caret lambda over d t frac d caret two t d t caret two left frac d t d t right caret two equals gamma underscore new alpha caret lambda d x caret new over d t d x caret alpha over d t. As before, we can set t x zero display style t equiv x caret 0 then the first derivative of x 0 with respect to t is 1 and the second derivative is 0 replacing lambda with 0 gives d 2 t d t 2 d t d t 2 equals minus gamma nu alpha 0 d x nu d t d x alpha d t Display style frac d caret two t d t caret two left frac d t d t right caret two equals gamma underscore new alpha caret zero d x caret new over d t d x caret alpha over d t. Subtracting d x lambda d t times this from the previous equation gives d two x lambda d T two equals minus gamma nu alpha lambda d x nu d t d x alpha d t plus gamma nu alpha Zero D X new D T D X alpha D T D X lambda D T Display style d caret two x caret lambda over d t caret two equals gamma underscore new alpha caret lambda d x caret new over d t d x caret alpha over d t plus gamma underscore new alpha caret zero d x caret new over d t d x caret alpha over d t d x caret lambda over d t, which is a form of the geodesic equation of motion using the coordinate time as parameter. The geodesic equation of motion can alternatively be derived using the concept of parallel transport. <laughs> Deriving the geodesic equation via an action We can and this is the most common technique derive the geodesic equation via the action principle. Consider the case of trying to find a geodesic between two timelike separated events. Let the action be S equals D S display style S equals int D S where D S equals minus G mu nu X D X mu D X New display style ds equals sqrt g underscore mu nu x dx caret mu dx caret nu is the line element. 
There is a negative sign inside the square root because the curve must be timelike. To get the geodesic equation we must vary this action. To do this let us parameterize this action with respect to a parameter lambda display style lambda doing this we get s equals minus g mu nu d x mu d lambda d x nu d lambda d lambda Display style s equals int sqrt g underscore mu nu frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d lambda d lambda. We can now go ahead and vary this action with respect to the curve x mu display style x caret mu. By the principle of least action, we get zero equals delta. S equals delta minus g mu nu d x mu d lambda d x nu d lambda d lambda equals delta minus G mu nu d x mu d lambda d x nu d lambda two minus g mu nu d x mu d lambda D x nu d lambda d lambda display style zero equals delta s equals int delta left sqrt g underscore mu nu frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d lambda right d lambda equals int frac delta left g underscore mu nu frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d lambda right two sqrt g underscore mu nu f frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d lambda d lambda using the product rule we get 0 equals d x mu d lambda d x nu d tau delta g mu nu plus g mu nu d delta x mu d lambda d x nu d tau plus g mu nu d x mu d tau d delta x nu d lambda d lambda equals d x mu d lambda d x nu d tau alpha g mu nu delta x alpha plus 2 g mu nu d delta x mu d lambda d x nu d tau d lambda 
display style 0 equals int left frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d tau delta g underscore mu nu plus g underscore mu nu frac d delta x caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d tau plus g underscore mu nu frac dx caret mu d tau frac d delta x caret nu d lambda right d lambda equals int left frac dx caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d tau partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu delta x caret alpha plus two grams underscore mu nu frac d delta x caret mu d lambda frac dx caret nu d tau right d lambda Integrating by parts the last term and dropping the total derivative, which equals to zero at the boundaries, we get that zero equals d x mu d tau d x nu d tau alpha g mu nu delta x alpha minus 2 delta x mu d d tau g mu nu d x nu d tau d tau equals d x mu d tau d x nu d tau alpha g mu nu delta x alpha minus 2 delta x mu alpha G mu nu d x alpha d tau d x nu d tau minus two delta x mu g mu nu d two x nu d tau 2 d tau Display style zero equals int left frac dx caret mu d tau frac dx caret nu d tau partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu delta x caret alpha minus two delta x caret mu frac d d tau left g underscore mu nu frac dx caret nu d tau right right d tau equals int left frac dx caret mu d tau frac dx caret nu d tau partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu delta x caret alpha minus two delta x caret mu partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu frac dx caret alpha d tau frac dx caret nu d tau minus two delta x caret mu g underscore mu nu frac d caret two x caret nu d tau caret two right d tau Simplifying a bit, we see that zero equals minus two g mu nu d two x nu d tau two plus d x alpha d tau D X nu D tau mu G alpha nu minus two D X alpha D tau D X nu D 
tau alpha g mu nu delta x mu d tau Display style zero equals int left minus two grams underscore mu nu frac d caret two x caret nu d tau caret two plus frac d x caret alpha d tau frac d x caret nu d tau partial underscore mu g underscore alpha nu minus two frac d x caret alpha d tau frac d x caret nu d tau partial underscore alpha g underscore mu New right delta x caret mu d tau. So zero equals minus two g mu nu d two x nu d tau two plus d x alpha d tau d x nu d tau mu g alpha nu minus d x alpha d tau d x nu d tau alpha G mu nu minus d x nu d tau d x alpha d tau nu g mu alpha delta x mu d tau Display style zero equals int left minus two grams underscore mu nu frac d caret two x caret nu d tau caret two plus frac d x caret alpha d tau frac d x caret nu d tau partial underscore mu g underscore alpha nu frac d x caret alpha d tau frac d x caret nu d tau partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu frac C D X carrot nu D tau FRAC D X carrot alpha D tau partial underscore nu G underscore mu alpha right delta X carrot mu D tau multiplying this equation by minus one two display style FRAC one two we get zero equals G mu New D two X new D tau two plus one two D X alpha D tau D X new D tau alpha G mu nu plus nu G mu alpha minus mu G alpha nu delta x mu d tau Display style zero equals int left G underscore mu nu FRAC D carrot two x carrot nu D tau carrot two plus FRAC one two FRAC DX carrot alp. Ha D tau FRAC DX carrot nu D tau left partial underscore alpha G underscore mu nu plus partial underscore nu G underscore mu alpha partial underscore mu G underscore alpha nu right right delta X carrot mu D tau. So by Hamilton's principle, we find that the Euler Lagrange equation is G mu nu D two X new D tau two plus 
1 2 d x alpha d tau d x nu d tau alpha g mu nu plus nu g mu alpha minus mu g alpha nu equals zero Display style g underscore mu nu frac d caret two x caret nu d tau caret two plus frac one two frac dx caret alpha d tau frac dx caret nu d tau left partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu plus partial underscore nu g underscore mu alpha partial underscore mu g underscore alpha nu right equals zero multiplying by the inverse metric tensor g mu beta display style g caret mu beta we get that d 2 x beta d tau 2 plus 1 2 g mu beta alpha G mu nu plus nu G mu alpha minus mu G alpha nu d x alpha d tau d x nu d tau equals zero display style frac d caret 2 x caret beta d tau caret 2 plus frac 1 2 g caret mu beta left partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu plus partial underscore nu g underscore mu alpha partial underscore mu g underscore alpha nu right frac dx caret alpha d tau frac dx caret nu d tau equals zero Thus we get the geodesic equation d 2 x beta d tau 2 plus gamma beta alpha nu d x alpha d tau d x nu d Tau equals zero. Display style frac d caret two x caret beta d tau caret two plus gamma caret beta underscore alpha nu frac d x caret alpha d tau frac d x caret nu d tau equals zero. With the Christoffel symbol defined in terms of the metric tensor as gamma beta alpha new equals 1 2 g mu beta alpha g mu new plus new g mu alpha minus mu g alpha new Display style gamma caret beta underscore alpha nu equals frac one two g caret mu beta left partial underscore alpha g underscore mu nu plus partial underscore nu g underscore mu alpha partial underscore mu g underscore alpha nu right. Note: Similar derivations with minor amendments can be used to produce analogous results for geodesics between light-like or space-like separated pairs of points. Equation of motion may follow from the field equations for empty space. 
Albert Einstein believed that the geodesic equation of motion can be derived from the field equations for empty space, i.e. from the fact that the Ricci curvature vanishes. He wrote, It has been shown that this law of motion, generalized to the case of arbitrarily large gravitating masses, can be derived from the field equations of empty space alone. According to this derivation the law of motion is implied by the condition that the field be singular nowhere outside its generating mass points. And One of the imperfections of the original relativistic theory of gravitation was that as a field theory it was not complete, it introduced the independent postulate that the law of motion of a particle is given by the equation of the geodesic. A complete field theory knows only fields and not the concepts of particle and motion. For these must not exist independently from the field but are to be treated as part of it. On the basis of the description of a particle without singularity, one has the possibility of a logically more satisfactory treatment of the combined problem, the problem of the field and that of the motion coincide. Both physicists and philosophers have often repeated the assertion that the geodesic equation can be obtained from the field equations to describe the motion of a gravitational singularity, but this claim remains disputed. Less controversial is the notion that the field equations determine the motion of a fluid or dust, as distinguished from the motion of a point singularity. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Extension to the case of a charged particle. In deriving the geodesic equation from the equivalence principle, it was assumed that particles in a local inertial coordinate system are not accelerating. However, in real life, the particles may be charged, and therefore may be accelerating locally in accordance with the Lorentz force. That is d 2 x mu d s 2 equals q m f mu beta d x alpha D S Ada Alpha Beta Display style D carrot two x carrot mu over D S carrot two equals Q over M F carrot mu beta D x carrot alpha over D S Ada underscore alpha beta with Ada Alpha Beta D x alpha D S D X beta D S equals minus one. Display style eta underscore alpha beta D X caret alpha over D S D X caret beta over D S equals minus one. The Minkowski tensor eta alpha beta display style eta underscore alpha beta is given by eta alpha beta equals minus one o o o o one o o o o one o o o o one display style eta underscore alpha beta equals begin p matrix minus one and zero and zero and zero zero and one and zero and zero zero and zero and one and zero zero and zero and zero and one end p matrix. These last three equations can be be used as the starting point for the derivation of an equation of motion in general relativity, instead of assuming that acceleration is zero in free fall. Because the Minkowski tensor is involved here, it becomes necessary to introduce something called the metric tensor in general relativity. The metric tensor G is symmetric, and locally reduces to the Minkowski tensor in free fall. The resulting equation of motion is as follows d 2 x mu d s 2 equals minus gamma mu alpha beta d x alpha d s d x beta d s plus q M F mu beta D X alpha D S G alpha beta 
Display style d caret two x caret mu over d s caret two equals gamma caret mu underscore alpha beta d x caret alpha over d s d x caret beta over d s plus q over m f caret mu beta d x caret alpha over d s g underscore alpha beta with g alpha beta d x alpha D S D X beta D S equals minus one. Display style G underscore alpha beta DX carrot alpha over D S DX carrot beta over D S equals minus one. This last equation signifies that the particle is moving along a timelike geodesic. Massless particles like the photon instead follow null geodesics, replace minus 1 with 0 on the right-hand side of the last equation. It is important that the last two equations are consistent with each other, when the latter is differentiated with respect to proper time, and the following formula for the Christoffel symbols ensures that consistency gamma lambda alpha beta equals 1 2 g lambda tau g tau alpha x beta plus g tau beta x alpha minus g alpha beta x Tau display style gamma caret lambda underscore alpha beta equals frac one two g caret lambda tau left frac partial g underscore tau alpha part i a l x caret beta plus frac partial g underscore tau beta partial x caret alpha frac partial g underscore alpha beta partial x caret tau right this last equation does not involve the electromagnetic fields, and it is applicable even in the limit as the electromagnetic fields vanish. The letter G with superscripts refers to the inverse of the metric tensor. In general relativity, indices of tensors are lowered and raised by contraction with the metric tensor or its inverse, respectively. <laughs> Geodesics as curves of stationary interval A geodesic between two events can also be described as the curve joining those two events which has a stationary interval four-dimensional length. Stationary here is used in the sense in which that term is used in the calculus of variations, namely, that the interval along the curve varies minimally among curves that are nearby to the geodesic. In Minkowski space there is only one time-like geodesic that connects any given pair of time-like separated events, and that geodesic is the curve with the longest proper time between the two events. But in curved spacetime, it's possible for a pair of widely separated events to have more than one time-like geodesic that connects them. In such instances, the proper times along the various geodesics will not in general be the same. And for some geodesics in such instances, it's possible for a curve that connects the two events and is nearby to the geodesic to have either a longer or a shorter proper time than the geodesic. For a space like geodesic through two events, there are always nearby curves which go through the two events that have either a longer or a shorter proper length than the geodesic, even in Minkowski space. In Minkowski space, in an inertial frame of reference in which the two events are simultaneous, the geodesic will be the straight line between the two events at the time at which the events occur. Any curve that differs from the geodesic purely spatially i.e. does not change the time coordinate in that frame of reference will have a longer proper length than the geodesic, but a curve that differs from the geodesic purely temporally i.e. does not change the space coordinate in that frame of reference will have a shorter proper length. The interval of a curve in spacetime is L equals G mu nu x mu x nu d s display style L equals int sqrt left G underscore mu nu dot x caret mu dot x caret nu right d s then the Euler Lagrange equation D D S 
x alpha g mu nu x mu x nu equals x alpha g mu nu x mu x nu Display style d over d s partial over partial dot x caret alpha s q r t left g underscore mu nu dot x caret mu dot x caret nu right equals partial over partial x caret alpha s q r t left g underscore mu nu dot x caret mu dot x caret nu right becomes after some calculation two gamma lambda mu New x mu x new plus x lambda equals u lambda d d s lane u new u new Display style two gamma carrot lambda underscore mu nu dot x carrot mu dot x carrot nu plus d d o t x carrot lambda equals u carrot lambda d over d s lane u underscore nu u carrot nu where u mu equals x mu display style u carrot mu equals dot x carrot mu if the parameter s is chosen to be a fine, then the right side the above equation vanishes because u nu u nu display style u underscore nu u caret nu is constant. Finally, we have the geodesic equation gamma lambda mu nu x mu x nu plus x lambda equals 0 display style gamma caret lambda underscore mu nu dot x caret mu dot x caret nu plus d d o t x caret lambda equals 0 topic see also geodesic Schwarzschild geodesics Geodesics as Hamiltonian flows Topic Bibliography Steven Weinberg, Gravitation and Cosmology, Principles and Applications of the General Theory of Relativity, 1972 John Wiley and Sons, New York ISBN 0-471-92567-5 C Chapter 3 Lev D. Landau and Evgeny M. Lifshitz, The Classical Theory of Fields, 1973, Pergamon Press, Oxford ISBN 0-08-018176-7 C Section 87. Charles W. Misner, Kip S. Thorne, John Archibald Wheeler, Gravitation, 1970 W. H. Freeman, New York, ISBN 0-7167-0344-0. Bernard F. Schutz, A First Course in General Relativity, 1985, 2002, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, UK, ISBN 0 521 27703 5. See Chapter 6. Robert M. Wald, General Relativity, 1984, The University of Chicago Press, Chicago. See Section 3. 3.